So we talked about pain management and you know in relation to pain management in relation to happiness and how being present is so important and how being in reality why that's so critical to happiness uh, and you know and how it's related to being present and so today I want to talk about an area of you know if you will pain management that's really important and it's in the area of being able to take feedback um, both from the world from other people and from ourselves uh, and it's kind of interesting because uh, being able to take feedback, you know, well, um, is really directly related to happiness because the ability to take feedback it, it is directly correlated to your ability to learn, right? Uh, being able to take feedback is learning. Uh, you do something and then if it didn't work out, that is feedback. The not working on is feedback and being able to stay present with it to understand why it didn't work out and being able to make adjustments for it is learning where you keep making these adjustments until you can make it work. And it's direct, directly related to adaptability and learning. And as you know, adaptability and learning puts you more in reality. Uh, it increases your sense of survival. And so, and the, you know, and the word survival becomes the word thriving if you do that really well. If you can adapt and learn so well uh, that you know, something is not even a threat anymore. That's called mastery. And you can really tell, actually, as a matter of fact, I, you know, I'd like to say if there was a threat, we have, you know, um, built cities uh, where, you know, the threat of nature, uh, we've been become so removed to it. Now we're actually finding our way back into it. It's almost kind of like when we want to get back to nature uh, or something dangerous, we actually have to pay money and then go and look for nature or danger, if you will. Uh, and so it's kind of you know an example of um, how we can remove ourselves further and further from things that are not working until it works really well. Now, having said that, but receiving feedback, uh, whether it's from someone else or from yourself, is painful because it shows where we are out of reality. And so it directly threatens our sense of reality. And I believe that's actually why receiving feedback is so difficult for a lot of people because we have to go through the pain uh, of recognizing where we are not in reality. And oftentimes what you'll notice is that we explain things away. The reason we explain things away is because we want to really prove to ourselves that we had a good reason as to why we didn't see it. And it's to actually make ourselves feel more comfortable and more secure uh, in, in terms of our, our sense of reality. The issue with that is, is that even if you do feel secure, you still can't adjust to it. it. You know, you're actually kind of, whether we realize this or not, we're advocating for our lack of competency and for our lack of reality. We're basically saying, hey, this is the reason why I didn't see this. This is the reason why I couldn't do it. And so you're, you're justifying that, which is probably true. I always tell people the issue is that, it, that it, the issue isn't that it isn't true. The issue is that it is true. You know, your reasons as to why you couldn't do something is true. However, it's also true that if you stay there, then you're gonna keep running into the situation where things, whatever it is that you couldn't do, will persist and continue to Kind of plague your life with that particular problem and so being able to take feedback and learn from that uh, you know is a key measure of happiness because it helps you create the life that you want to have it helps you adapt and it helps you have ease in life and the more you learn the more easier life becomes and the better your ability to take feedback, the better your relationship become, uh, relationships become because people feel heard and people feel that you're working with them and your own life gets better because you become smarter, you become more capable and more importantly, you start understanding your needs better. Uh, so you stop staying in the same issue and experiencing the same problems over and over again. And so, being present naturally allows you to receive feedback, but also I feel it's really important to be able to embrace feedback 
understanding that feedback is probably going to be painful um, because feedback naturally shows uh, you know that we are a reality and we are made to feel pain when we are a reality because it directly threatens our sense of security and survival uh, and so the more you are able to receive feedback the more you're connected to reality and so therefore the safer it becomes right was well, the entire premise so one of the key things that really helps with feedback is, is that if you don't receive the feedback, you will have to face the feedback at some point. And so, you know, we oftentimes talk about having to face the truth. Most of the time, actually, really what people are talking about is facing feedback. Uh, you know, something happened and, you know, you didn't really look at what was really causing the issues, what part you had in it. And, and because of that, the issue is persisting and you keep wondering why all your efforts are not working, yet you're not looking at the area where you feel most vulnerable because most likely you're not looking at it because you have doubts as to whether you can really change or not or whether you can really do something about it. It typically happens in really vulnerable areas where you feel the least capable. And so you're hoping that you know, um, the solution is going to be somewhere else where it's not your fault. Uh, and so, but it's really disempowering. If you really think about it, it's a really disempowering position. Uh, and of course, you know, you're going to be in pain because you're going to feel disempowered to be able to do anything about your own life because it's a place where you felt compromised to begin with. And so one of the key things that I want to say is, is that you've probably heard this before and I'd like to kind of just quote this because I think it really kind of makes this point really well, which is uh, you can run from the truth but you can't outrun it. And we see this all the time. And, you know, it's actually very common where when I'm working with people, uh, you know, especially pro procrastination, actually. Procrastination is a good example of this. Procrastination really has a lot, of, a lot of different reasons as to why it happens. But one of them is we have resistance to facing something we don't want to face. And so, <clears throat> um, let's, for instance, you know, you have homework. Uh, and you don't want to look at it because you don't want to look at how much there is and you want to enjoy the weekend. And it's, it's, uh, it's let's say for instance, Friday, and you don't want to look at it because you're afraid that there's going to be a lot and then it's going to ruin your weekend and you're hoping that there's not going to be a whole lot of homework, uh, and, but you're afraid to find out so you don't look at it. Now, here's the issue. If you don't look at it, um, when Sunday comes around, you're going to find out anyways. And the interesting thing is, is that it's not like you can really rest from it anyway. So if you say, ah, I'm not going to think about it, it's not like you really stop thinking about it, you're ruminating about it. And let's say, for instance, you wanted to have fun and really get lots of good rest, because you're ruminating about it, you're not even get, getting the rest or the fun that you want, because you're partially caught up. And because of that, because you constantly thought about it, you didn't really have a good weekend anyways. And you're probably feeling more tired from it and worn out. And then you have the pain of actually finding out. Because if you're afraid to find out, most likely, actually, you've probably had a lot more to do than you wanted. And then you have to deal with the disappointment of not having had the courage to look at it. And then you actually have also the pain of having to do everything on Sunday. Uh, and then you still actually have to look at yourself. And so if, you know, it's kind of like, you know, why you didn't look at it. And you kind of, you're gonna be ruminating and probably beating yourself up. And so I kind of just mentioned like eight different kinds of pain. But if you looked at it on Sunday, you would have had the pain of finding out. You would have had the pain of having to do the work, which you're gonna have anyways. Um, and, but you wouldn't, and then you would have had to, you know, actually you wouldn't have actually had to, any other pain. You would have had those two pains. You wouldn't have had the pain of ruminating you wouldn't have had the pain of being caught up and not getting the benefit that you really want to get anyways. You wouldn't have had the uh, pain of being disappointed at yourself for not having enough courage. You wouldn't have had the pain of, um, uh, you know, like feeling surprised and having to do the work begrudgingly at the last moment. Most likely you would have been able to finish the work sooner and have the fun and, you know, have the kind of weekend that you would have liked. And so, a big part of pain management is actually being able to forecast uh, realistically 
what's going to give you more pain? Because if I were to say that you can joyfully do something every time, that's actually not realistic. What's true about good habits is, is that uh, if someone has good discipline and good habits, they feel more pain about not doing it than doing it. Uh, you know, a good example is, is, you know, like brushing your teeth. Most likely, if you in the habit of brushing your teeth every night before you go to bed, or in the morning, if you don't brush your teeth, you just don't feel right. The pain of not brushing your teeth is greater than brushing your teeth. Whatever good habit you have, you'll notice that there's a lot of pain associated with not doing it because you understand the consequences. So people who don't procrastinate, they actually understand the consequences of procrastinating where they feel it in the now, and they realize there's gonna be a lot more pain of not facing your pain right now and facing it later. And so you get a real choice. Uh, and so just having a reality of pain, like, you know, being able to choose between bad and worse, where you say, okay, this is bad, but it's better than this worse. So I'm going to choose bad. That's making a better choice. And if you keep making these choices, then actually, eventually you start having less and less worse choices. And then if you keep make, and then that actually leads you to a place where you can make a choice between bad and better. And if you keep making better choices, then eventually choices become more often than not between you know better and good. And then eventually you can start making choices between good and great. Now you can't eliminate the worst, the bad, and the betters altogether, uh, but the ratio of at which they happen really reduces. It's kind of like you know on a car learning how to do an oil change and a car maintenance before it breaks down. You know, good habits because you realize that the pain of maintaining your car is actually a lot less than having to face it once it's broken. It's a lot more money. It's a lot more hassle. It's a lot more pain. And so a big part of pain management is just having a reality of about what causes more pain and just having a realistic view about that. And so now with that, uh, uh, have fun considering uh, if you're about to procrastinate. Yeah, just think about which is going to cause you more pain. Uh, whether doing it now will be less pain or doing it later. And just bringing awareness to this and becoming present with this. Now, again, there's a theme of being present, right? Just by becoming present with it will allow you to you learn. And you're like, oh, you know what? I thought that it'd be better if I delayed this. But really, the more I'm experiencing this, I'm realizing that it's actually just better to do it now. And it'll be your choice. You won't, you won't feel like it's like something you're forced to do. And hopefully that was helpful and gave you some things to consider about happiness. Thank you.